Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Ted's Booze Cellar with me, your most gracious host Ted, the premier alcohol review show here on YouTube. It is currently 6.38 on the 1st of August 2021 with you, me, your most gracious host Ted. Now today we're going to be taking a look at another one of the beers from the Brewdog beer subscription box from uh, July of 2021 and this one's going to be a bit of an interesting one because we've reviewed many a Pilsner on this show before and this one's well a Pilsner so kind of spoiling the party there but this one's a bit of an interesting one because I've had Japanese beers before but mostly they've been kind of gold beers or lagers I've never had a Japanese style Pilsner before and what's interesting about this one is that it's Pilsner with jasmine flowers so this is Matsurika and um, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly uh, I think it's made by Japas, who are a collaborative brewery with Brewdog. Um, so, ah, oh, okay, this is interesting. It's a Nipo Brazilian women brewers. So it's a brewery that's run by a mixture of Japanese and Brazilian women. One of the highlights of Japanese cuisine is the tea, and one of the most delicate and flavored, flavorful, sorry, teas is made using the jasmine petals called. Matsurika in Japan. We added these petals to a recipe of a pilsner or pilsen with a soft and delicate beer bringing jasmine petal notes to the aroma and palate. So bohemian style pilsner with jasmine flowers. What's the actual brewery called again? Um, so it is brewed and canned in the UK by Brewdog but so they are the brewery who made this but yeah, this looks pretty good actually. So yeah, I'm interested to see what Matsurika is like. So I've got to say, I do like the design of the can. It's floral, it's decorative, it's elegant, but it's simple enough to the point where you can kind of tell what you're getting into here. It's flowery, light and crisp. So I'm gonna give the can a 10 out of 10. Now we're gonna give it a sniff just to see what our first impressions are like. And I want to just also mention that this is a 5% alcohol volume Pilsner. So it's not the weakest one out there, but I mean, it's about average strength, I'd say, for most Pilsners that I've had, so... It doesn't really smell much, actually. It kind of just smells like a pleasant enough gold lager, but... Yeah, just 5.5 out of 10 for the smell. It doesn't really smell bad, but it just doesn't really leave any impression at all. It's, um, it's a bit of an enigma so far, so I think like the proof will be in the pudding when we taste it. But anyway, we'll have ourselves a quick palate cleanser of water first. And then, in the most important part of the video, I hope everyone has a great weekend ahead. So, bottoms up. Oh. Oh. Oh no. Oh, I don't... Oh. Mm. Oh, oh, oh no, I don't like this. Oh. Oh, oh, that after... Yeah. That aftertaste is not nice. That, wow, that is surprisingly bad. I thought it would at least be like a... Five and a half, a six, like something, nothing that's special, but like at least a nice, crisp, slightly floral pilsner. F bloody hell, that's not good. So, the start of the taste is quite interesting. It's quite a sort of a flavorful, um, floral sort of zing uh, mixed in with like the same kind of texture as what you'd expect to see in a probably like a hazy pale ale actually and it introduces itself quite vibrantly and interestingly and then the flavour just takes a complete break until the end when it just overloads you with like this floral poignantly this weird florally kind of weirdly bitter sort of aftertaste um, not in the same way that like sort of an IPA has a bitter aftertaste where it's sort of like zings you at the back of the throat with some hops and barley this just has a weird sort of like bitty nitty aftertaste that just sort of like comes in and then fizzles back and then just like lingers and it just kind of just doesn't go away and I don't think oh it does feel like you're just 
drinking just flower leaves. It's like really quite unpleasant actually. And then I just, and then like the, the middle part of the taste is pretty much non-existent. There's like no taste at all. There's like this weird watery texture with like this slight bit of fizz. And it, honestly, I actually really genuinely got a flashback to when I drank Sainsbury's Basics, or as it's now known, Sainsbury's Depot 90 um, um, Bitter, because that had a similar thing where there was a, there's a, a zing of flavour at the beginning, and there's nothing in the middle, and then the finish is has like this weird bitter aftertaste that just kind of lingers in the mouth, and it just doesn't really go away, and it doesn't accentuate itself in any particularly pleasant way. I mean, I definitely wouldn't say this is as bad as that, but... Oh, man, it's not good. It literally just feels like they've just poured jasmine tea together with some beer, and it doesn't work. Like, it really, really doesn't work. Like, I am tempted to give it as low as what I gave to the Sainsbury's Basics Bitter, which I think I gave that something like a 2 out of 10. But then I do have to say, like, this isn't as unpleasant of a drinking experience. Um, the texture isn't great, but it's smooth enough that it you can swallow it down comfortably enough. And the middle part of the flavour isn't so horrible enough that it kind of is, un it is completely undrinkable. Although it, it is damn close to being that bad. So, um... I was thinking even a 3 out of 10 would be too good for this, so I'm going to give this a 2.75. It's just barely a bit more bearable than a fucking Sainsbury's Basics Bitter. Oh man, is it bad. That was um, rubbish. Yeah, that was, it's just purely awful. Really, really bad. Um, very few redeeming factors about it, other than the fact that it's quite uh, fragrant and the design of the can is nice and the fact that there are some interesting flavors in there that i feel if brewed together more competently could make a really nice craft pilsner but yeah i mean it's just a bunch of really interesting ideas just mixed together in just the most haphazard way and it's just barely better enough than a sainsbury's basic spitter which isn't exactly a glowing recommendation as i'm sure you can understand so yeah 2.75 out of 10 and even then I think that's probably being quite generous so if you guys did like this video leave a like share and subscribe if you have any suggestions for future episodes of Ted's Boo Cellar let me know in the comment section down below and if you have any thing you'd like to check out on my other platforms I'll leave the links to all those on the video description down below as well but until next time have fun with whatever you're doing don't do anything I wouldn't do wash your hands take care of yourself take a mask with you to the shops drink responsibly no yellow mitts and I will see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Boot Cellar. The pills are so bad, they made me pretty much completely mess up my outro. Nice one.